Yes, I'm using graphing paper on purpose. So we're going to start with the function y equals f of x. Or you can have an implicit function f of x, y equals 0. Uh, if you have an implicit function, you do need to have a function of x for some x values. So if we have this implicit function here on the right, where y is a function of x for x in some interval a to b. Uh, so either, either way, y prime is the slope of the function. So it's usual y prime. So if we have a first order, so what does order mean when it comes to an ODE? The highest power? Highest derivative. Highest derivative. So it's, let's see, linear is a little bit different. Linear is talking about the power of the, so this, you could have a y third derivative squared, and it wouldn't be linear not because of the third derivative, but because it's getting squared. So there's kind of two orders, two order type things to pay attention to. One of them is the order of the derivative. The other one is the highest power that any of the derivatives are raised to. So first order ODE means only first derivatives. So if we have Y prime, this could depend not just on X, but it could also depend on Y. And this will be for the same interval of x. So what we're really given when we have this, we really know about the slope of the original of the solution. So we're really given information about the slope of y. That's exactly what this says. The slope of y is this function here. So when we have this, we're given information about the slope of y. So what we're going to do is basically graph the slope. <coughs> so it's going to be very different than the graphs we're used to. So we're going to graph the slope here. And we're going to do it at various points. X, Y. Or you, know, you got to limit X to be inside the domain of the function. So when I wrote these notes, there was directionfield.com was a good uh, direction field plotter. Uh, URLs don't care about capitalization until after the first slash. So you can use either D. Now if it's like slash something else, then the capitalization matters, whatever I would write after that. That's true across the entire internet. So we'll just do some examples here. So. I'm not going to use direction field right now. We're going to graph them all by hand. But if you want a I, Desmos, there may be some way to get into some options in Desmos. But Fooplot that I use a lot, I don't think, I'm pretty sure does not do direction fields. And I'm pretty sure Desmos doesn't do them either. But you're more than welcome to, I'm sure there's way more than one site that plots direction fields or slope fields. So you're welcome. If you find some other good ones, let me know. And I'll add them to this list. So our first example. We'll go super easy. So you could probably solve this without thinking hardly at all. Solve for y. <laughs> what is y? Nope. Not enough. 
Plus oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we got a parabola, but we don't know basically how far up or down is going to be vertically shifted. So if I graphed out every solution, which is not the direction field, what I'm going to take a minute to do is graph out uh, these x squared functions. Obviously, I can't graph an infinite number of c values, so I'll just graph out maybe 0, 1, and 2, something like that. Just, put, just draw three parabolas here. So there is C, that's the C equals zero solution. And I'll jump way up to C equals two will be my next solution. So that's C equals two, and then I'll go with a negative two. I can't graph every C value, so I'll just put a few of them up here, and then, uh, so every solution would look something like this with just a different vertical shift. So any questions on that right there? So what we're gonna do next is graph the slope field. What the slope field is, if we go in here, I'll use green on this graph. So what the slope field is, you're gonna, you're gonna draw a small line segment for each, uh, you get to pick which x, y values you use, but we're basically coming through and sketching out how the slope looks at each of these different x, y values. Now I'm realizing green, I should use a brighter color because I can't really see that green very well. Space makes my computer go too slow. Oh, but they just gave me new ones. <laughs> All right, we'll go with gold. Oh, that's sweet. Yes. All right, so it should be pretty clear what I'm doing. Just going through and just marking off uh, some slopes. Now, you can't mark every point slope because for example, there's an infinite number of points between these two points I just highlighted, so I can't draw an infinite number of slopes in between. So you're just approximating, you're just picking some points, plug <coughs> them, uh, plugging them in. Now I <coughs> graph the slope field by looking at the solution. So what we're gonna do now is pretend like we have no idea what the solution is, even though it's obvious, it's very easy to compute. So we're gonna pretend we don't know what the solution is. I'm gonna graph the same slope field yeah. off of this. I'm not going to solve it, but I'll be able to graph the slope field off of this. So let's go negative 2 to 2 on both the x and the y axis. And I'll make this, I'll try to make this as accurate as possible here. And I'm going to draw a grid for every integer value, integer point between negative 2 and 2. So I think we'll have 25 total. <coughs> So I think the easiest x coordinate is probably zero to plug in. So I'll just start at zero. Does it matter, does y prime depend on y in this equation? No. There's no y on the other side. So y prime depends only on x. It's whatever x is times two. So I'm gonna start with x is zero. So I have these flat slopes here when x is zero. So I just went all the points with x zero I just put a flat slope. When x is 1, what is my slope? 2. 2. So when x is 1, my slope's 2. So all these points I just circled, those are all the x coordinate of 1. So on those five points, draw a 2 slope. So 
which should look something like this right here. And what slope will I have when x is 2? 4. I have 4. So do your best. Draw some 4 slopes. They start getting pretty close to vertical. So any questions on those slopes right there? So take your other two x coordinates. We got negative 2 and negative 1. And then draw your five slopes. It's similar, yeah. All right, so we have our full, well, it's not full slope field because there's obviously infinite points, but enough of it that we have some idea what's going on. So now I want to compare what we just drew to what I drew over here. And I'm going to do something you probably can't do so easily. I'm going to erase the solution. So I just left with some of the slopes. So you can't really do this. So I think you're going to erase underneath things you've already written. And now I'll do something else you can't do. Maybe I can't do it either. Uh oh, copy paste. Oh, maybe I just need to move it. Oh, come on. All right. I don't think it's the right. S oh, it's actually not bad. I'm worried. That's really good. I'm worried I won't be able to move it. Oh, okay. I always undo it. All right. So we basically have the exact same information here. We just didn't put as many of them on the original graph. It would have taken it quite a bit more time. So you can graph the slope field without solving the differential equation. Or you could solve it, graph all the solu or enough solutions, and then carefully come in and mark off your slopes. <coughs> so what we're going to do is graph our slope field without solving in this section. You can solve if you want. Some of them are very easy to solve. Some of them are not easy to solve. So I'm going to undo to get our full graph back up there. So it looks like your notes. All right. We'll do another example now. Now, <clears throat> actually, before we do our next example, if all you got was the slope field, can you sort of see a parabola in here? or several parabolas. So here's a way to think about a slope field. Think about it as a moving current, like a river or an ocean or an air current, jet stream, whatever type of current you want to think of. And if, if you think about a river, just thinking about a leaf falling in. So if a leaf falls in the river right here, whatever a leaf looks like, what's going to happen, the slope tells you where it's going to move. So it's going to move, depending on which, way, which direction it's going, let's say it's going this direction, it'll move somewhere there, so maybe your leaf will move over to here. What's going to happen next? It's going to move over a little bit more that way. And now, it's going to move directly sideways, so it'll kind of end up over here, and then up here, and then up here. So if you trace the path this leaf that fell into the river takes, it will form a parabola, is what will happen. So that is the way you should think of a slope field. You're basically kind of diagramming a current. You've probably done some similar stuff in physics, where you have particles moving through a charge field or something like that. Uh, magnetic field, where they yeah, you're looking at stuff like electric potential and all that. Yeah, and there's you know you can move through. There's lots of fields. You can move through a gravitational field, electric field. Uh, I don't know what other fields are out there, but other fields that <laughs> there's other forces that will be. Uh, but the idea is these forces are very predictable. So you know, if you know your position, you know your force that will be applied at the position. So that's very different than walking through a football field where there's different people will be moving around at different times, applying different forces. So that's an unpredictable field to move through. Whereas a particle moving through a magnetic or gravitational field, it's what we call deterministic. 
if you know where it enters and it's, you know, full, certain <coughs> properties, you'll know where it's going to travel after that. Like we know where the moon is, we know where it's going to be in a year from now. Not easy computations, but given that it's all gravitation, we know where it's going to be in the future. That's how you know when the next eclipse is going to be and all those fun computations. So those are all basically fields that things are moving through. So let's take our next example. Y prime equals negative X over Y. So on this slope, does this slope depend on Y? Yes. Does it depend on X? Yes, so we can't just go and kind of do one column at a time because when we change our y coordinate, the slope changes. When we change our x coordinate, the slope changes. And what about when y is 0? Is it a vertical slope? It's a vertical slope. So you can say undefined, but what that really means is vertical. So what type of line has an undefined slope? Vertical. Vertical. Still a line. The slope's still undefined, but it's still a line. What about asymptotes? Asymptotes will, let's see, they'll look like, let's not worry about that now. You'll probably get a problem with that in there. All right, graph the same negative 2 to 2 <coughs> and graph the slope field from negative 2 to 2, x and y. And you can't do it like one column at a time because the as you go down your column, they'll change. So you basically have to do 25 individually. And you should see a pattern form if you go carefully row by row or column by column. So will we basically have to extrapolate what's happening at zero, zero? Yeah, there's a problem at zero, zero, which you will discover. There's kind of two, there's a pattern going that it won't fit the pattern, basically. <coughs> disturbance in the flow. Draw the 25 dots. Yep, and the 25 slopes. And it's negative x over y, not positive x over y. So I intentionally left zero, zero blank. What happens at zero, zero? Oh, that's a good question. So here, <coughs> I just took out eight of these. I basically graphed all the ones that were super easy. I looked up and said, well, if x is zero, it's flat, horizontal. 
unless y is 0. So when x is 0 and y is not 0, it's horizontal. So that was all the points on the y-axis, basically, that weren't at the origin. And then I looked and said, well, what makes it undefined? It's undefined when y is 0 and x is not, or it's vertical when y is 0 and x is not 0. So that's the x-axis are all vertical. And then I looked at, well, what would make this 1 when x is negative y? So that's my negative diagonal. And then my positive diagonal, when x is y, my slope is negative 1. So that's how I filled all those in quickly. And then you could absolutely plot points. Like this guy over here is 2, 2, 1. So negative y over x, negative 1 half. So that's a negative slope, but not, uh-oh. Negative x over y. Negative x over y, so it should be negative two over one, so it's negative two. So it's gonna look like this. The other one is the reciprocal of that, which would look like this. And what I'm actually doing now, I could plug in the values, but I'm basically going <coughs> with the flow, pun intended. So I'm looking and seeing what would be around it and what I think the flow should be. Now, I'm okay doing this because I basically checked two of them, so I have a good idea of what's happening over here. And then I went around and kind of applied the same idea to the other ones. So they're basically all either positive 2, positive 1 half, negative 2, or negative 1 half, depending on where you are. So they're all one of those four values. Okay. So there's our slope field. Now we've got a problem. 0, 0 doesn't follow either pattern. I can't both write it horizontal and vertical. So there's a problem at 0, 0. So 0 is what we call a singular point here. The 0, 0 is a singular point. So it does not fit in with the flow. So given this graph of slopes, what do you think solutions will look like? If I dropped a leaf in here, what would happen? So if I dropped a leaf right here, what would happen to this leaf? Go in a circle. So our solution is going to be circles. What do you think separates one solution from the next solution? It's radius from the center. It's radius from the center. So in this case, the constant basically defines how big the radius is. And now if we think of the singular circle at the middle, what would that circle look like? Just it would look like a dot. So it would look distinct from, it would not be a circle technically, it would be a single point. So it looks different from all the other solutions because it would be just a dot, or just a point. So that's what a singularity is, or a singular point, that is the definition. It does not fit in with the flow. Um, and now we have the idea of integral curves. <coughs> and I'll write that in green. So integral curves are the paths that a leaf that a leaf would make if dropped into the flow. Is this not just the solution to the y? Yes, it happens that it's, it is the graph of one of the solutions for a particular constant, yeah. So an integral curve, uh, also known as one, one particular solution. So remember, the general solution has an undetermined constant in there. The particular solution is you fill in a value for that constant. So if you drop a leaf in, you're basically setting an initial condition. You're saying the initial. Uh, or, or it has to travel through this particular point. So you're picking one initial condition when you 
specify a location. So it's a good place to stop. I think you should be able to do almost all the homeworks from this section now.